Okay, I wanted to talk to you about something because it's uh, applicable to me today. I had to teach a class for an hour. Uh, and when I do that, and I'm live just on Zoom, and I'm no one's responding back, and I'm just blah, 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 blah for an hour, my voice goes and I don't lose it so much. It's like if it's like when you're in a big crowded building and you have to yell at a nightclub or whatever. It's been a long time since I've been in a nightclub, but you know what I mean? Uh, you, <laughs> you're talking over music or whatever it is. It's very difficult to, um, to for me to get my voice to, to uh, not get crackly or get sore or hoarse. And you, since you're perfect uh, to ask about what you do, you do so much of it. What advice do you have? Well, you are not alone, and this is a typical problem of everybody who uses their voice, but they're using it wrong. And okay. I hear, I hear how your 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 sound is coming out. Coming of right from here instead of way down in yeah. your diaphragm, it, right? It has to come out from the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. And in my book, <laughs> <laughs> Amplify Your Media Presence, Amplify Your Brand, I talk about how to use your voice properly. And I, I do this with my clients. And one time I was doing a whole class of this and I told them to bend over and do these exercises that are in the book. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, one, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. two, try that, Diane. Mm -hmm, one, mm -hmm, two. <laughs> what you're doing i see uh, i'm up here when i need to be down that's here that's right that's right mm -hmm. and notice when you're saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your, your whole body moves your yeah. shoulder. but it, yeah. it shouldn't have anything to do with the shoulders it has mm -hmm. to do with the diaphragm you're right you gotta go low try that again you know what i think for me which is funny because i have so many people who tell me i have the lowest voice and i I, I think, I don't know if we've talked about this on the air. I think I've told you that I'll be talking to my kids or something and somebody will say, who's, the, what guy were you talking to? They'll hear my voice. <laughs> I'm a guy. And I, I, uh, I do it when I call, like when you used to call 411, I, you know, they say what city and I'd just say Phoenix. I, I would say Phoenix. And my voice was so low, I guess that um, they go, well, how can I help you, sir? <laughs> and I get so like, what? And so I noticed that when I would call them, I would go out of my way to sound more feminine. You know what I mean? No. Oh, you see, and so you go way up high to do that. No, that's a typical problem. Yeah. yeah. For people who think that their voice isn't right. The, the point is that you have to always be working from the diaphragm. Very low. In down your, here. Yes. And you know what's interesting is, and I said this in the book, that I was I was doing spin class on my Peloton and I noticed that the instructors who were all so well trained and all so buff and they've been dancers. Many of them are right. dancers. And I noticed when they say, okay, raise your arms, do this, do this, do this, they are all speaking from the diaphragm. And when they're wearing a midriff top, you can see their diaphragm their abdomen go in and out and in and out as they're speaking. And if you do not have the coordination with that diaphragm, you are ruining your voice. And this is, mm. I had a client mm. who came to me and she said she had gotten very hoarse. And I said, you have to, you have to be seen professionally because it went on for quite some time. Right. I said, you better see somebody because you can have nodes or nodules on your vocal cords, which could lead to a cancerous episode. Yeah. So she said she knew all about this because her father was a throat surgeon. <laughs> said, so why didn't you go to him? I got go, you know, yeah. we're talking about. So she went to him and she came back to me and she said, he said, I need surgery. And wow. And my vocal cords are so um, inflamed mm -hmm. that he told me to do the exact same exercises that you told me to do, Dr. Gil. <laughs> Duh! So now I can prevent people from having these issues, but they've got to use their voice properly. And just because you have a deep voice doesn't mean that you're using it properly. You know, I, I, I've listened to some great vocal coaches um, and the last Forbes event I went to, he had us all doing this uh, 
a, a wonderful experiment. And as it was interesting, he would point out if somebody was nasal or somebody was yes. this or that. I don't think you, we hear it in our own voices. I, no, the thing no. I notice is when people don't enunciate. Yes. And that's, that's tough because when I'm on the radio with them and I'm like, uh, did you just say, you know, I mean, I have to repeat sometimes all I, I, I've noticed that some directors who are stars in their movies do that when they have kids on, they'll, they'll repeat what the kid said just to make sure the audience hears it or something. And I kind of find myself doing that with people who I find can't really get out clearly what they're trying to say. But yeah, I, I just thought it was an interesting um, well, thing to talk about is one thing. But it's all proper breathing. And every single athlete knows how to do this. They learn how to do this. And they teach you in yoga and all that, you know, the Pilates. Yes. And it's hard for me. I, I have, I, it's like it's tapping your head and rubbing your stomach. It's like the golf swing kind of thing. There's just, you're, you're like, <laughs> this is too many things to pay attention to. Only because you're not used to it. Yeah. As babies, we yeah. all breathe properly and our sounds are emitted properly. And somehow when we mature, we screw up the way our mechanism works and we get very sloppy and we forget about the diaphragmatic breathing, but that is essential for any voice because yeah. you're gonna lose it otherwise. How many of, of the singers that we hear about end up having to rest their voices for a month? Yeah. They have that problem. You know, I, I work with people who were singers who have, would get on stage, they could belt it out, they had a beautiful voice, not an ounce of fear doing it, but they get in front of people and have to speak and <laughs> their world ends. What is that about? Well, that's a whole psychological thing. <laughs> uh, when, they're, when they're in their craft, uh -huh. often they feel as though they are empowered. They have their power. But mm -hmm. suddenly you take them onto another platform yeah. and they don't feel- They don't have the confidence because they know they can sing. They know they can sing. Yeah. But it was like the first time I looked around and I was the only one who didn't have a book at this mm -hmm. big uh, event that I was speaking at. Everybody else had books. And I just looked at them and said, how do you write a whole book I mean, how do you fill it with so many words? I mean, I could say hello and goodbye, and that's the end of it. Yeah. That was my mindset. Right, right. And here I am, 18 It's amazing how later. much. I know, really. Each book, though, you learn something new, don't you? Oh, each everything you learn something <laughs> You know, one of my gildograms is whatever touches us, teaches us. Yeah. And boy, oh boy, every time some screw up occurs, every time somebody doesn't get along with somebody, every time I'm looking for a different path in a, um, in a project that I'm doing, I always ask not, why did this happen to me? <sighs> Making myself the victim, but instead, what am I supposed to learn from this? You know, I don't even know if I ask it formally, you just finally go, huh? Mm -hmm. You look back and you go, wow, I wish I could have known that when I first wrote that or I, you know, but I think it's, it's a le lesson. Um, I, I mean, I always used to ask people on my radio show, what would you do differently? You know, if you could go back in time, no, nobody goes, wants to change what they've gone through really. Cause it really builds you to what you are now. And even the bad things you learn the best things from. So, you know, uh, I, was mar I was married to a guy for seven, eight or nine years. <laughs> you can't remember? Well, now you can tell you about how you look at it. <laughs> but but uh, I knew that when that marriage ended, I just knew that I needed somebody like him. If it were not he, it mm -hmm. would have been somebody like him mm -hmm. to drive me crazy and aggravate the hell out of me. <laughs> but I had to learn these lessons on how to deal with uh -huh. somebody like him. Uh -huh. so whatever the thing is, okay, maybe I was married for nine years, but, and maybe I could have learned this lesson in nine months or nine minutes, uh -huh. but I didn't. Uh -huh. <laughs> I 